Qualcomm and Ericsson have modelled the potential economic impact 5G could have on Europe, provided that the right policies, incentives and investments take place. Joining me now to explain more about the research and to discuss the findings are Wasim Shabaji, Senior Vice President for Government Affairs at Qualcomm, and Gabriel Solomon, Head of Government and Industry Relations Europe and Latin America at Ericsson. Welcome, both of you. Let's start with looking at the work you've done. What results did you find? Wasim, were there any surprises there? The modelling we've made uh, on the economic benefits of 5G uh, to Europe has shown significant results, significant benefits, 210 billion in terms of uh, economic impact for Europe in a range of industries and small services. These 210, uh, 210 billion benefits are generated by just investing 48 billion. Yeah, that, um, incredible uh, numbers there, and the, the benefits seem very substantial. Gabriel, anything else you found or any surprises that you learned? For me, what was the standout finding was the impact that 5G can have in rural areas, a net benefit of some 55 billion euros. And I think one of the other interesting parts of the rural story is that um, connected farms or smart farming, smart agriculture also enables the decarbonisation of that sector. Yes, very encouraging news. Now, we've heard a lot about what 5G can bring from an enablement perspective, but until now we haven't seen actual economic numbers before. Wasim, why did you feel it was important to do this? We are uh, at a time of significant investment by government uh, to enable uh, us, the economies, uh, to recover from uh, the COVID crisis. Um, the EU uh, will invest around 140 billion uh, in digital services, 140 billion um, can bring significant benefits. And we think this money should be invested in a future proof infrastructure and innovation platform, and that would be 5G. And uh, that's why uh, this study is significant and timely. And Gabriel, why is it so important that we try and create actual economic numbers and, and predict the impact of, of 5G? Well, I think one of the um, parts of the methodology of this analysis was to do a cost benefit analysis. And we know that when governments have to spend taxpayers money or public funds, they need to assess um, that they're going to get a good return on those funds. And I think what this study puts in place is, is it looks at 5G's cost benefit analysis. And Gabriel, what's the objective of, of this work? What are you hoping to achieve with this paper? We see the transition to 5G in Europe as being difficult, particularly in the digital transformation area, aligning the incentives of various parties and multiple different stakeholders is not an easy task. And so this is where a critical role for government can come in um, and gel the different stakeholders to, together. And Wasim, what are you hoping to achieve with this paper? Uh, we need a full-scale deployment of 5G across urban, uh, suburban and rural areas. Very important, rural areas. If the EU, EU countries would invest around 20 billion in 5G infrastructure in this total innovation, uh, open innovation platform, the benefits of these 20 billion would reach 50 billion. 4.5 CBR, cost to benefit ratio, it's significant. It's a very strong message. Uh, Gabriel, any final thoughts or conclusions you can share with us? I think there's a recognition that digital transformation enabled by particularly 5G connectivity is a precursor to decarbonisation. And so almost in order to achieve that priority, we need to really make sure that the digital transformation and the connectivity and the networks get built ASAP. And we're seeing final thoughts from yourself. We're entering a new uh, decade um, and the new leadership in Europe, political leadership in Europe wants to build uh, a future proof uh, digital um, economy. 5G sits at the core of that economy. That's our view. That's what the study has demonstrated. Well, Wasim and Gabriel, thank you both very much indeed for sharing your views with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. And if you'd like to read the full report from Qualcomm and Ericsson, you can find the link in the descriptor below.